Good afternoon. In this video, I want to deal with the issue of uh, President Trump and his uh, recognition that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel and how important that is. There was an article written in the Bible's Believers <coughs> Bulletin in a 2017 called a, a Burdensome Stone talking about Jerusalem. I'd like to read you some par portions of it. You can find this online at, the, at their website, uh, the Peter Ruckman website. Uh, he says here, uh, four U.S. presidents have had an opportunity to secure heaven's blessing for themselves and, and for their nation. Genesis 12, 3 is a promise as sure as the Lord's second coming, and I will bless them that bless thee. With the stroke of a pen, four men who call themselves Christian, quote unquote, could have uh, certified Jerusalem as the capital of Israel by moving our embassy out of Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Why hasn't it been done? Are they afraid of, uh, of a future Palestinian state? He goes on to uh, say, Millions of evangelical Christians went to the polls last November 8th and elected Donald Trump as president. Uh, he would not be in the White House today without their votes, and he knows it. One particular pledge that the candidate Trump made repeatedly was that if elected, he would move the U.S. Embassy to, in Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. He was clear and un un unequivocal on this issue. Not all evangelicals voted for Trump because of this promise, but Zionist Christians such as myself, were anxious to see him redeem his pledge, especially since the last Republican President George Bush went back on his word and refused to move the embassy. He pledged to do this if elected when he spoke to a Jewish audience in New York in September 2000. Verily, all men are liars. Amen. Four months later, the governor of Texas went to, went to the White House. In May 2001, President Bush had an opportunity to redeem his pledge. He failed to do it. He followed the advice of his State Department, the UN, the Pope, and the Arab world, and decided that such a move would not be in our best interest. And by the way, the same, same people fought against the recognition of Israel in 1948. Truman stood up against them. Uh, George Marshall, uh, one of the most famous and uh, important people in, in our history, uh, largely responsible for winning World War II as a general, uh, he resisted. Uh, recognizing Israel. Why? Because everyone was afraid of the Arab, uh, and including the, uh, the British, who were involved in the separation of uh, Israel from Palestine, the Palestinians. And, uh, uh, and, the, uh, and I actually offered a state to them, but they refused. They, re they were not going to have uh, a divided, uh, we're not going to give Israel uh, any land. And so uh, even they were offered th uh, a state themselves, they fought against that. Put against Israel, and of course, invaded Israel as soon as uh, uh, their independence was declared in 1948 in May. So this uh, this is going back quite a long time. But that's it. Anything you do in Israel, you're fighting against the entire world system uh, that hates Israel. I'm sure uh, Stephen Anderson is is uh, gritting his teeth over this issue uh, that tr uh, Trump has uh, uh, recognized uh, Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Or anti Semites will be crying about it. Um, let's see here. Uh, the, let's see. So, four months after going back on his word and embarrassing those Jews who supported him, Muslim terrorists slammed planes into the World Trade Center towers in the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. Fire came down from the sky on two symbols of American power commerce and the military. God is love. So, most Christians would never believe that thousands were killed because their president thought it better to have the world's favor than to honor a pledge made to a people obsessed with proclaiming is Jerusalem as their undivided capital city. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Here we are 16 years after 9-11. President Clinton, J Bush Jr., and Obama have dealt with the burdensome stone the same way, ignoring the will of Congress which called for our embassy to be moved to Jerusalem. Uh, 22 years ago, I mean, Congress voted on that and, and said they should be voted. Now they're all screaming, they, you know, they don't want it to be done. The Jerusalem Embassy Act 1995. Three crowd-pleasing politicians sat in the White House and watched the nation pile up trillions in debt while being invaded, quote-unquote, by millions of illegal immigrants. This was the blessing they procured on our nation while keeping our diplomats in Tel Aviv when they should have been moved to Jerusalem. Obviously, to multiple millions of American voters, our nation was careening downhill and fast. 
It was time for a candidate to promise to make America great again. On election night, he would be called upon to lead America, hopefully, to a brighter future. Donald Trump was sworn in on January 20, 2017, and the Bernison Stone was put in his lap. When the Lord has a mind to do so, he can really ring your bell. Amen? Israelis and Netanyahu government were, were wild with joy over Trump victory. Israeli settlers living in Judea and Samaria believe they now had a champion in the White House. Millions of Christians who voted for Trump had smiles on their faces, and I was among them. Arab countries were bewildered. The Pope was chagrined. Hillary Clinton supporters went shocked. Many experienced in severe mental anguish over the loss of the latter-day Joan of Arc. So-called journalists blaming it for mainstream, so-called journalists working for mainstream media outlets began to sprout a narrative that blamed Russia for Trump's victory. Finally, after eight years of being, on, uh, of being in President Obama's doghouse, Israel has a friend behind the desk in the Oval Office. Men's going of the Lord, how can uh, a man that then understand his own way? Proverbs 20, 24. Could President Trump have known what intense pressure he would have to stand up to if he intended to follow through on his promise to move the embassy? I don't think he had a clue. Rudy Giuliani, former New York mayor, and others around President Trump urged him to follow through early on with his promise to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Somehow, the voices, the, the voices of those who gave counsel to delay the move and even to reconsider it were beginning to win out. Soon there appeared reports in Israel, Israel, Israeli press that President Trump's son-in-law, Gerard Kushner, would be asked to re-innovate a peace process between Israel and the Palestinians, a process that went nowhere for years. Gerard Kushner is an Orthodox Jew, but he has strong ties to liberal Jews of New York City, and, and they are not Zionists. Uh, last March and April, I made three calls, two to Pensacola, one to Washington, D.C., to the office of my new congressman, Representative Mike Gatz, a Republican claimed to be a Christian. I asked his, uh, I asked his representative to have Representative Gatz send a, met a letter to President Trump reminding him of his promise to the Jews. Uh, it was necessary to remind Representative Gatz that he received thousands of votes from Christians who know the promise of Genesis 12.3. Remember, the first duty of a politician is to get himself or herself re-elected. Politicians do not act unless they believe that goal is in danger. I played politics in New York in my own safe days and discovered early on how reckless were those holding or seeking public office. On my last call to Gatz's, uh, Gates, uh, Gatz's office, I said they were, I would be calling regularly to find out uh, what the Congress was doing by getting President Trump to redeem his pledge. Be assured that President Trump knows that he won Florida with his 22, 29 electoral votes only because he received a huge plurality in the Florida plan panhandle. This enabled him to offset the large polarities Hillary Clinton received in South Florida. Donald Trump became President Trump by virtue of the grace of God and nothing more. His skill as a deal maker and his ability to earn billions as a real estate developer had little to do with his surprise victory. Every time he promised to recognize Jerusalem and move our embassy there, heaven took note. No Bible believer needs to be told how easily, easily one's tongue can create unimaginable problems with unforeseen outcomes. No Gentile can fully appreciate how much the whole Jerusalem has on the heart of the man of sorrows. To, pre pre to present yourself as a champion of that city of gold and then seek to placate those who want to remain divided is to put yourself in God's crosshairs. That's a bad place to be, as President George Bush discovered on September 11, 2001. Might that tra tragedy not have happened if President Bush had honored his pledge to relocate the U.S. Embassy when he had the first opportunity to do so in May 2001? Faithful Christians are scarce these days. Not long after President Trump took office, he saw one of the key themes of his election strategy go by the boards. He had promised to do away with Obamacare. Every time he made this pledge, his supporters went wild. With the Republican Senate and the House of Representatives behind him, this attempt to repeal uh, President Obama's legacy would be accomplished, or one th or so one thought. Well, the effort failed, and it became a huge embarrassment to the new president. There were other setbacks, not quite as dramatic, but also injurious to the image of the man who said to his supporters, you'll get tired of winning so often. A Christian brother in Brooklyn called me after the Obamacare fiasco to ask me what I thought about it. What else could I say but to remind him of Genesis 12.3? I said that every day this president drags his feet on his promise he made to the Jews, he risks getting more egg on his face and, do and, doesn't, and don't expect anyone in the White House to figure this thing out. They were all biblical jackasses. Uh, then he goes on to say, uh, 
which way is this which way is this thing going to go? As a Bible believer and a strong supporter of Israel, all the promises made by Donald Trump during the 2016 campaign all go in a basket mark politics. The only promise that will bring a blessing to our, our land that does not belong in that basket. Recognizing Jerusalem and as Israel's undivided capital city goes in, in a basket marked courage. With the whole world against you, including a substantial number of your own government, it will take a lot of nerve but the Jews called Hutzpah to deliver on that pledge. Growing up in Brooklyn, surrounded by Jews, I learned early on what it meant to have chutzpah. This word derived from the, uh, the Hebrew chutzah, chutzpah, meaning audacity, boldness, even in insolence. The greatest Jew of all, our Lord Jesus Christ, was not deficient in this category. In the great uh, display of chutzpah, he, mocked, he knocked over the tables of the money changers and whipped some of them and flowed the temple, the gods and Jewish elders in their place. He didn't need a pole to tell him uh, to tell him whether or not this was the right thing to do. Politics didn't concern him at all. What about a new president? I'm sure he wishes to be a, a two-term president like Obama, Bush, and Clinton before him. The only one who failed to be re-elected since Ronald Reagan became president in 1981 was George Bush Sr., whose Secretary of State James Baker cursed the Jews and, der and derided Israel, uh, Israeli Prime Minister Shamir. Well, Trump cannot win without the overwhelming support of evangelical Christians. And he knows it. There was every political reason for him to move the embassy if he expects these voters to support him in 2020 as they did in 2016. Um, our slide into national moral abyss continues thanks to the cowards in pulpit and citizenry, citizenry that cannot bear anything negative. President Trump wasn't elected the nation's pastor and the Christians ought to remember that. Nevertheless, he is in a position, position that gives him the power to do what three former presidents failed to do since Congress told him in 1995 to move our embassy to Jerusalem. Every real Christian that has a brain that functions knows God placed him in that position. He puts people in key positions of cri uh, critical times to accomplish his purposes. Queen Esther was, an, was a great example of this, yet Mordecai, her cousin, had to move her to act courageously at a very critical time in her, her people's history. Is there a Mordecai around Donald Trump ready to challenge him to forgo his fear and act decisively in favor of Israel? Gerard Kushner, Trump's son-in-law, is not that man. Fear has, has so far prevented Donald Trump from carrying out his promise to move the embassy. Uh, and he goes on to say, uh, when you make promises to the Jews and refuse to follow through, you put yourself in a very dangerous place. You have failed to take into account the interests of the one who stands by his people. On May 18th, Jewish Republicans were told that the president had decided not to honor his pledge to move the embassy, U.S. Embassy at this time. This is the biggest mistake he has made in his entire life. He has shown that under pressure he can fall like a cheap umbrella. Reaction among most Jews could be characterized as profound disappointment. Donald Trump has followed the same advice given to President Clinton, Bush, and Obama. I can only wonder uh, now as to where of what the Lord will do to show his displeasure and the man that was miraculously given the most powerful position in the world, wait and see. Now right after this was written, we had three back-to-back -back hurricanes, two of them hit the mainland and then one hit Puerto Rico. Maybe this opened Trump's eyes. Maybe he's, he's sort of light. And also, he, I've heard you know, the Ivanka, Ivanka and Gerard, uh, his, his son-in-law also on, on the outs for various other reasons. And so maybe, you know, he's getting the right counsel now and uh, has decided to do the correct thing. Uh, whatever it is, whatever whatever's opened his eyes and, and he's seen the uh, handwriting on the wall. And uh, he's he knows he has to honor his promises. And uh, he's there to do that. And he's done it. And so we need to pray for him. Pray for uh, uh, that he will maintain uh, his steadfastness in, in uh, keeping... Uh, his pledge, and we, and and because he's going to, is going to get into a lot of uh, attacks, just like Truman was in recognizing Israel at, at the at the start. He had to fight his own State Department, Truman. They, I mean, he had, they they actually thought, and Kennedy, uh, uh, you talk about the deep state. Reagan had to do this against the same thing. You know, when he made that speech about tearing the wall down in Berlin, they the State Department kept rewriting the speech. <laughs> Reagan had to go back and back. She put the words there. He said, "Well, you got you got to keep right." The State Department think that thinks they won. They won the foreign policy, and that's been the common uh, attitude of the State Department. It's been always been full of liberals, left wingers, globalists, and one worlders. 
uh, and so uh, uh, it's a very difficult uh, part to uh, part of the government to keep under control. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, President Trump has decided to do the right thing, honor his promise, recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Israel. Now we you know this nation, Israel, is not the one that God is going is going to be blessing. Uh, it's going to be a new Israel when the Lord returns. This is the one that the Antichrist is going to be dealing with. And uh, a temple is going to be set up in that new Jerusalem. And so these things are being set in place. There's no question about that. And, of course, then the Antichrist is going to make peace and allow the sacrifices in the new temple. And all these things are going to happen. But the right thing, right thing to do, the biblical thing to do, the scriptural thing to do, is to recognize that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. And President, Truman, uh, President Trump has done that, courageously has done that. And so uh, we need to uh, uh, praise God for that. Praise God that God has put a man in the, in the White House to do God's bidding, and he is doing it. And uh, so the fact of the matter is uh, there's going to be a big backlash. The world is not going to accept this. The world is going to fight against it. Uh, it is not going to go out easily. So we'll, when you prepare, prepare ourselves for re re repercussions and just pray uh, that uh, uh, that God will continue to bless President Truman, uh, President, keep it, President Trump, and uh, uh, protect him, protect him, because uh, he is now probably the most hated man in the world uh, for what he's doing. And uh, you can see it, the media hates him, you know, obviously the papacy hates him, uh, the, the UN hates him, everybody hates him. And so he's going to be under great attack and, and under threat, under threat. Uh, you know, physical, physical danger. So I would urge anybody listening to this to pray for his protection, pray for his strength, pray for his family, uh, that he will continue, continue to do the things that uh, he was elected to do and that God, God put him in, in the office for him to do. Amen. Thank you.